how you doing Justin back with you for more chord explorations today we are checking out the A shape kind of hoping that you've joined me already for the D shape the C shape and the G shape but plenty more fun coming up let's get to a close-up so here's our bog standard A chord you should be pretty familiar with that one by now uh, you might know it like that that was a common way of playing A chord but I think that this fingering is way way better Okay, if you're not sure why I think this one is so much better than that one, go and check out the A chord lesson on my beginner's course. It's all explained in great detail. I'm going to assume that you're happy with this one. So, variations. First one, lifting off the third finger. Love this chord. This is an A sus2 chord, but again, you don't need to worry about the name of it. It's just an A chord with one of the fingers lifted off. I, I must admit, if I was playing just that chord for a while, I might change the fingering. The whole idea of using that first finger is principally to get the whole of the A chord and if I was just doing the A sus2 I might refinger it, but it doesn't really matter to be honest. So that's the first option. It's a really good one. Second variation, lifting the fingers off, is lifting off first finger, which gives us an A7 chord. Now, a lot of people have trouble with this chord because the second finger lays over a little bit and then mutes it, so you don't really get much... You don't really hear any difference if, there's, if the third string is muted by the underneath of that second finger. So you really want to make sure you're using the tips of your fingers there to make sure you get that G chord ringing clearly. Now, actually, I think most times I prefer the sound of this A7. There's another way of playing A7 that I think is more useful for blues and stuff like that, but... This is still an A7 that you might want to use. And while we're on that, the, just a minor variation of that is uh, sometimes I see beginners that aren't able to get their first finger kind of wedged up enough and they leave the first finger back in the first fret. Which is a lovely chord. This is an A major 7th chord. If you're playing a song and you've got an A chord, you'll either find that A major 7th or A7 will work. Rare that they both do, unless it's a specific movement where you'd have A, A major 7, A7, going to D usually. That kind of, you know, a set chord progression. But usually either A major 7 or A7 will sound good. The best way to do it is just to use your ears. So learn to trust your ears for a decision like that. See which one sounds cool. Uh, the next variation with lifting fingers off would be the second finger. You're probably not going to lift it off permanently, but again, that little hammer on. Really, really, really handy little uh, uh, variation there to have lifting off the second finger and learning. Just a, yeah, very, very useful. You'll find lots of songs that you can use it in. So that's all of the variations where we've lifted fingers off. We've got little finger free, so. The obvious one that it can go down is the third fret of the thinner string, which is that variation of the A7 I mentioned. So instead of playing this, you can play this, which I think sounds a little bit cooler, a bit bluesier if you're playing a blues. I would definitely be heading for that one rather than this variation of the A. But again, it is just a matter of listening to the song and seeing which one fits. Sometimes this one will be a little bit too jarring. It might clash with the melody, in which case you go, well, this isn't the best one for now. I'm going to use a different variation. Um, another minor variation of that one is putting the little finger underneath. So actually all the fingers are in the same fret and there's definitely an easier way of playing that, which we'll get to in a second. This would be an A6 chord. So you often get like... You know, if you were dancing in the dark somewhere, you might be using this major to six, but you can see it's really awkward even for me to fit all of those fingers in that one fret. It's just like, it's pretty tricky. So uh, you want to be aware of that. An easier approach would be to use the first finger all the way along. Now, many of you will have already figured out that playing a regular A and just muting the thinner string is a lot easier to play that way. I'm, more times than not, if I'm playing an A chord, probably going to be that one and the thinner string is just muted uh, you can like I can lift up my knuckle far enough to get that thinner string if I want 
But then the rest of my fingers are kind of stuck well out of the way and it doesn't feel very natural to play it that way. So I like to, to be trying to get that thinnest open string. So I generally just aim for these and mute that thinner string. I think that's generally a better approach. Then that dominant seventh chord also becomes easier. You could use second finger if you want. That way, if you're going to use second finger, your thumb's going to have to come around the back. So it depends on if you like. For me, I can play it with my third finger thumb over, which I do like most of the time. Again, I don't think it's a, a good idea for beginners to have the thumb over. You need to keep it at the back for bar chords. But later on, when your fingers are a bit stronger, you might choose to bring the thumb over around the top there. And then you've got dominant seven to the six, maybe to the open again. Now that also leads us to this sus chord. So this is, we could have done it this way actually. I, I jumped a little too soon to uh, uh, the, the bar actually, because we could have had regular A and then adding the second finger down. A sus4, A, A sus2, A. Very, very common chord movement. That one's used in lots of different songs. I'm sure you recognize it going, oh, that sounds like this song or that sounds like that song. It's, yeah, super common to do it that way. Uh, but you can, of course, do it this way. You can't really do sus2 from there without changing the fingering, which makes it all kinds of awkward. But you can get that same note, the note B, here. Oh, I love this chord. This is like a really, really, really tasty chord, I think. This is an A add nine. Again, you don't want to be playing the thinner string. So this is open, second, fourth, second, mute. It's really, really nice to add that down. A add nine, that one. And remember, if you're doing this one, you've also got this. You can add the third finger down two frets higher on the fourth string. Loads of lessons on that in the beginner's course if you want to check out how to do the... All of that stuff. That's all covered in uh, grade two, 12 bar blues lessons. Go and have a look if you're interested in doing that. But all of those variations are available when you do the, the A chord using a bar. I really hope you enjoy exploring your A chord. I'm going to say it again. Really important that you put this into practice. So find some songs that use the A chord that you're confident and happy playing already and have a go at using some of these variations, trying to use different chord shapes, try and make the songs your own, see how your creativity can influence the songs you play. And again, remember that you've got to deliberately, consciously practice this stuff if you want it to become instinctual. If I'm playing an A chord in any song, any time, all of those variations are just hanging around, for waiting for my musical imagination to get triggered to try out something new. And that's kind of the place where you want it to get to. It's not difficult. It just requires a little bit of conscious effort trying to work these things into your playing so that it just becomes part of your musical repertoire, your musical language. So when you're speaking, you happen to use these ideas when you're playing. That's the aim. It only happens with practice. As usual, your practice you should involve five minutes of experimenting specifically within the A chord, just trying out different fingerings, getting used to the sound, training your musical imagination in your hand to work together to recognize, oh, this sound is played like this. That's part of the process. But then again, don't forget the repertoire. They're actually playing songs that use these ideas and seeing what you can get out of it. It's a really, really big deal. So don't forget that. Uh, think that's it. Do remember on the website, all of the other shapes are covered as well. So you might want to go and check that out if you haven't already. Hope you're enjoying all of this course and you're having a fantastic day. You take care and I'll see you for more very soon. Bye-bye.